we've looked at flow over a circular cylinder, and now we're going to look at flow over an arbitrary cross section. Okay, so uh, so let's say we have some flow over some arbitrary cross section uh, that's centered at the origin, and uh, so I've copied down the equations for the circular cylinder centered at the origin. So know that or notice that we just have z here instead of z minus z naught. Um, so, I mean, it would be pretty straightforward to work through this with the, the extra z naught there for, for some translation. Uh, but we're not going to do that here. We're just going to assume that everything's at the origin. Um, so what we notice from the circular cylinder is that uh, the flow field is actually singular at, uh, at the origin. Uh, you, so we have this 1 over z term that shows up. And, um, and so it's singular at the origin. Um, however, external to the geometry, if this was a perfect circular cylinder over here, external to that geometry, we don't have any singularities in the flow. Um, uh, so anyway, that's not an issue if we're looking at the potential flow external to that geometry, which we usually are. So now we want to look at flow over an arbitrary cross section. And, um, and we might notice, actually, if you look at, at this... Uh, uh, this expression here for the complex velocity over uh, for the flow over a circular cylinder, um, it's actually the first three terms in what is called a Laurent expansion. Okay, so a uh, Laurent expansion uh, is a is a summation. Um, uh, very similar, actually, to a Taylor series expansion. Uh, it's a summation uh, from n equals 0 up to infinity of some a n constant over z to the n. So uh, so this is similar to a, a Taylor series expansion, except that we're expanding in 1 over z, okay, and increasing the power of z in the denominator. So you can see here that this first term is uh, is for n equals 0, then z to the 0 is just 1, and so we're left with a n, uh, there would be that first constant that uh, that is independent of z. And then uh, the second term here is is the first uh, the first term in this, or the second term in the series, I guess, n equals 1, um, and we've got a 1 over z times some constant out front. And then the third term here is the third term in the series, where z equal for n equals two, so we've got z squared here in the denominator, and uh, and we've got some constant out front. So these uh, uh, a sub n terms are uh, complex constants. They can have uh, both real or imaginary terms within them. Uh, or both, you know, they can have uh, either or, uh, or a combination. And, uh, and now we can, um, and, and maybe I should just uh, show that this Laurent expansion is, is uh, similar to a, a Taylor series expansion. You know, we can, we can expand uh, a Taylor series about the origin um, and, and, uh, and match a function uh, and the more terms we include, the better it will match that function. And uh, so in a similar way, the more terms we include in this Laurent expansion for our complex velocity, uh, the better we're going to be able to, uh, to match the external geometry. Okay, so let's look at what capital Phi of Z is. It's simply the integral of... Uh, of w of z, which is the complex velocity, so the, the velocity potential is just the integral of that. And so if we just integrate this equation, uh, for the first term, um, we will get uh, a0 times z. Then the second term, uh, c, is, is 0 to the first power in the denominator. When we integrate that, we get a natural log, so it'll be a1 uh, times the natural log of z. And then the remaining terms, uh, we actually put a negative out front here, and we're going to say from n equals 2 to infinity, because we already did the, the 0 and the 1 term. Uh, so from 2 to infinity, the integral then um, is just a n 
over n minus 1 times 1 over z to the n minus 1. And then, of course, we've got a plus c when we integrate that. Okay, so now we have this Laurent uh, series expansion. Uh, we can have as many terms as we want in there. Um, but let's go back and look at what this looked like for the circular cylinder. So uh, for the circular cylinder, we can uh, take either phi or w uh, and look at the terms inside of that. And uh, so let's just look at phi here for a minute. So a0 uh, times um, uh, a0 for the, um, for the circular cylinder, if we just look at that first term here, um, or excuse me, if we're looking at phi, then we're looking at this right here, and it's some constant times z. So for that, we get uh, v infinity e to the minus i alpha. Uh, the first term, a sub 1, is everything times the natural log here in this equation, uh, which is uh, i times gamma over 2 pi. The v infinity actually cancels with the v infinity out front. And then the second term, a2, is, um, notice we've got this minus sign here uh, in, this, in this phi equation. And so it's going to actually be minus uh, r squared e to the i alpha. Okay, so, um, so this defines a circular cylinder. And, uh, and it's simply the Laurent series expansion where the rest of the terms, uh, so a n uh, for, uh, actually I should say n, a n um, equals zero for n uh, greater than two. Uh, so if we set the rest of those terms to zero, we get a circular cylinder. Uh, if we if if we have a more complex geometry, then we would have higher order terms now that are non-zero. So let's just look at one of these terms, this a zero term, uh, and it turns out uh, if you look at this uh, complex velocity, um, that uh, that all of the higher order terms we've got a one over z here, one over z squared. If we added more terms here, we'd have one over z cubed, z fourth, and and so on. Um, all of these, as uh, as we get away from the origin, um, all of these terms actually go to zero. So the so the further we get away from the origin, um, uh, then all of these this Laurent series simply converges to whatever that uh, first constant was. So actually, a zero um, uh, for all cases. Uh, a0 will be equal to v infinity e to the minus i alpha because that is our free stream velocity. So A0 will always be set by that. That's simply our free stream velocity because all of the other terms drop out as we move away from the origin uh, as, or as... Uh, as, as we move an infinite distance away from the origin, as z goes to uh, infinity, then the, the whole solution, uh, w of z, uh, so w of z as uh, z approaches infinity, um, uh, goes to a zero. Okay, so that first term is simply our free stream velocity, um, and that will be true no matter what geometry we're trying to uh, to predict the flow over. Okay, so this is uh, kind of an interesting take on um, on being able to match the flow over uh, arbitrary geometries. Uh, in this course, we're actually not going to spend much more time on that. Uh, we're going to use a conformal mapping technique instead, but, um, but it is interesting to know that you can use this Laurent series in order to match uh, more complex geometries. The trick for the more complex geometries is simply that we need to uh, figure out how to solve for um, these a sub n values uh, for n, well, really any of them except for a0. a0 we know because of the free stream, uh, but for any other geometry, we're going to have to now solve for uh, the, the a1 through a n uh, uh, complex uh, constants uh, and for the circular cylinder, we know what those are. 
Um, but, uh, but for more complex geometry, we'd have to find a way to solve for these constants that then make that geometry a streamline of the flow.